In a node red flow, each node can add to, modify, and even delete your data in very dynamic ways. You can easily start a flow with just a timestamp in your message and end up with a very complex collection of objects. But what if you need a snapshot of your message from a specific part of the flow? You may want to use that data in an entirely separate flow page, compare it to another value, prevent something from being overwritten, or save it to reference sometime in the future. One fast, easy way to store your data more persistently is using the context stores, which I'm going to focus on in this video. To start, here's a very simple example to show you what I'm talking about. Here, I can inject my timestamp on the left. It appears in my debug pane, of course, but that's it. There's no way for me to reference this value again anytime in the future. If I inject again, right here on the left, I get another time that's a completely different value. So what happens if I actually need to save this? Let's start with the most simple way we can, and that's using the pre-installed change node. I'll just drag that in, drop it onto my wire, and change it so that I'm setting a flow variable. I'll instead of setting message.payload, I'll select this dropdown, and I'll make sure I set flow.someValue. So in this case, let's call it flow.savedTime. And what I want to set flow.savedTime to is that current message.payload. So now my payload will be saved under save time, and I'll be able to reference it again sometime in the future. Now we'll need some way of getting that back. Let's create another debug node, and this time we'll set it to inject that flow variable. I'll just double click this, and instead of getting my message.payload equal to the current timestamp, I'm going to refer to that flow.savedTime. Now, when I inject my message to payload, it'll hold that new save time, and I'll be able to reference it again over here. Let's make a copy of this debug node and wire that in. Now, I'll be able to save my time at any point and reference it down here. But let's first see if I just deploy and try to view my save time before I have actually even defined it. If I inject here, you can see that it knows it's undefined. I've never said what flow.save time is, so I don't really have anything to reference. Now I'll just inject my current timestamp, set that flow.save time, you can see that's the time that I should get, 9.30, and of course if I inject here, there we go. Now you can see I get this timestamp, and it is in fact for 9.30 and 36 seconds. This is because it's this exact same number that I'm now referring to in this bottom part of the flow. I'm easily able to get it back, and it's been saved for me more persistently. So now what happens if we need to take this, for example, into another flow page? If I come up here and click Add Flow at the top here, I get this entire new tab and this entire new window here that's separate from Flow 1. If I were to grab my save time and copy these nodes, I'll paste them into this second Flow tab here, and we'll be able to inject and see if we can get our Flow save time over here. I'll go ahead and deploy, but we'll see when I inject on Flow save time here, it's still undefined, even though on Flow 1 it actually is defined as that 9, 30, and 36 seconds. That's because this flow context only stores within this one main page here. If I go to a different page, I have a second instance of that flow save time. So what happens if I want to reference one value across multiple flows across these multiple pages here? Let's see an example of that. I'll make a copy of all of these nodes, and we'll set up another example here. This time though, instead of flow.save time, I'm going to set a global value. And this one's going to be global.hello world. Here, instead of injecting the timestamp, I'll show you that you can also save a string. So instead of my timestamp being generated here, I'm going to define my type as a string, and I'll hand in the string hello world! Exclamation point. Now when I click done, we'll inject hello world, save that under global.hello world, and I'll be able to read it back here using this global value here, getting of course hello world. This is going to be a separate value. And we'll also make a copy of this on our second tab here. So if I make a copy of those nodes, come over here to my second tab and paste that in, we'll be able to see the values across multiple flows now. I'll go ahead and deploy. You can see that, yep, our flow time was never defined and we haven't defined our global hello world yet. But if I come over here and define that value, we can see, yes, hello world did come through to the debug pane. And I can also confirm that both in this tab and over here in flow number two as well. You can see, even just by defining on that one page, because it's global.hello world, I'm able to view it from this flow as well. So you can see how easy it is to define things either limited to just one flow page with this flow dot 
whatever you want to call it, as well as globally with global dot, for example, hello world. Now, this is just using the basic change node, but a lot of the more advanced uses of storing this context data is being able to do more complex calculations. Let's have a look at a quick example of where you can find some different documentation about how to do this using JavaScript. I'll go to nodered.org and I'll view their documentation site. We'll have this linked in the description below. But there's a lot of good data on their documentation site, especially under getting started and the user guide. You can see here there's a lot of different pieces of information here, especially using the function node and what's of a special interest to us today is this working with context right here. You can see here it's going to show you all the different context scopes, i.e. you can save it to just a specific node, to the flow or global that we've already seen, and how to use the different pieces of code. There's a lot more detail in here than we need to go into today, but you can always come through and read it at your own pleasure. I'm going to go ahead and go to using the function node, and I want to see how to store data. You can see that's over here on the left. This shows me the basic code that I need. So instead of using just the change node, I can use the code flow.get and flow.set, where I get the name of the value, and when I set it, I need to get, get the name of what exactly I'm setting and what value I'm handing in. Let's create a really basic counter and view that over in node red. I'll just go ahead and copy this whole object, all this code, so that I can get a really nice easy example right off the bat. I'll of course need an inject node to trigger this, so I'll just drop one in really quickly. That's going to inject a timestamp, and that's going to activate this function node here. If I double click this function node and paste the text in, we can see how this is going to work. We're going to get some count, which is going to get the context.get count, and this context only exists within this one node. So I won't be able to refer to it in any other part of the flow, but we'll see an example of that in a second. To make sure that we don't try to work with some count that's undefined, we use these two vertical bars to say, or if it isn't defined, go ahead and initialize it as zero. Then we just add one, save it back under our count in our context store, and we'll review it out on message.count. So let's put in a debug node, just make a copy of that one, and we'll make sure we view the complete message object since we want to see message.count, not just message.payload. So I'll view the complete message object and wire that in. We'll see if I clear up my debug pane and deploy. Every time I inject, I'm going to be adding one to this count. You can see that right here. I'll pin that so we don't have to uh, open it up every time. Now when I inject again, there we go, count two and count three. But you'll see if I try to inject, and let's say I want to refer to that count here, I can't inject a context.count. It doesn't exist outside of that node. I would need to store it as either flow or global. So let's make a change to that and see what that would look like. Now, instead of doing context.get for just this node, I want to do flow.get so that I can refer to it in a different part of this flow. So flow.get and flow.set, I'm saving the value back to the context after I increment it by one, and I'll be able to view it down here with this inject node. Now I'll just inject message.payload equal to flow.count, and that value will be able to be read in from other places as well. Let's again go ahead and make a copy of that debug node so that we can see this in the debug pane over on the right hand side. I'll go ahead and deploy, and we'll see that initially my flow.count is undefined, but as soon as I define it as one, and we can even increment it a few times, two and three, now I can get that value back three anytime, as many times as I want. It's now saved, even though I didn't use a change node, I used a function node, just with these couple of simple lines of code. Let's take a look at one more complex example to show you that you can store pretty much anything besides just numbers, strings, and timestamps. I'll go ahead and clear up my debug pane, and we'll make a copy of this. Copy and paste. Now what I'm going to be doing is instead of injecting a timestamp, I am going to inject a payload that's going to be an array. So I'll just go into JSON, and I'm going to add an array of strings here. So I can have it say something like do, comma, or, comma, do, not. So now I have an array, do or do not. Now I can inject that, and I'll be able to save it using either my function node or a change node. Let's go ahead and use a change node. I'll just drag one in from the debug pane over on the left and wire it in. Here, instead of setting message.payload, I'm going to save something like flow.list. So we'll have our flow.list get saved, and that's going to be what comes in on our message.payload. Now this array comes in from message.payload, 
it's stored in flow.list, and I'll be able to reference it in a different part of the array or a different part of the flow. So let's go ahead and inject that flow.list, and we'll be able to view it right here in the debug pane. Before I try to edit it with any functions, let's just see and make sure it's actually working. I'll go ahead and deploy. We can see that the list is not yet defined until I inject here. We've set it, and there we go. We've got this list here now. If I inject, I can refer to that list again. But what's cool is now that I have this list saved, I can also add to it. So let's make a copy of these nodes and see what that looks like. I'll just go ahead and paste that in, and we'll drag in a debug node. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to read in some data and modify it. So let's start this one from scratch this time. I'll start by doing my list equals to, and I'll do flow.get list. If it's not defined, I will get an empty array. And again, can just use those two vertical bars as like a or, if it's not defined, go ahead and use this value, in this case, an empty array. Now let's add something to this. Let's say we have some extra string, and it's equal to the value do or do not, there is no try. Now I just want to add this extra string on the end of my list. So I can just do my list dot push, and I'm going to push that extra string onto the end. Now I of course need to make sure I save my list back again so that it actually persists this data. So I'll do that flow.set. Flow.set, I am handing it in to that same saved list. And what am I putting in there? Well, I'm putting my list in there because it's the one I've modified. We can also do message.payload equals this new list and make sure that we actually return at the end here. Now you can see I'm getting my saved list. That should be do or do not. Then I'm going to add my extra string, push it onto the end of my list, and save it so that I can view it in the debug pane. I'll go ahead and click done. You can see that that function is going to run, and we'll be able to view our list right here. So let's clear up the debug pane and uh, deploy. We'll try to view our list. You can see here it's do or do not. It has persistently saved that list. So now I'm going to inject, add to that list. Now you can see it says do or do not. There is no try. I've pushed on that extra item and I can view that and we get all five values that we expect. You can store pretty much anything you need, whether it's uh, an array, an object, even a complex object like a weather object, something simple like a count or a timestamp, or whatever you need. The main thing is, is that you choose the appropriate context store scope for your needs, whether it just needs to exist within one node, for example, the context within a node for something as simple as a counter, or you can store it in Flow or Global if you need access to it in other parts of your Node-RED projects. I hope you found this helpful, and if you have any questions, we'll have links for some extra resources down in the description below. Thanks for watching.